Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today we have a review of Murder at Blood Mansion What is it? Well, it's a game where you're trying to find out who the killer is Think sort of like uh, Cluedo or Clue in the US The whole idea is that someone has committed one of these murders You'll pick one and then that is the murder It tells you what weapon was used you then need to figure out who committed this murder. You'll do this by picking out the suspect. So of all these suspects, one will be dealt into the deck. And you need to figure out who that is. Which obviously means drawing them from the deck, or managing to see them in someone else's hand. You don't actually have to keep hold of them though. You just need to know who it is. The next thing to do is you then have to collect the weapon, which is also in this deck. And there are lots of other cards in this deck as well, including these false dead-end suspect cards, the red herrings. So just because someone has a suspect card, you don't know that it's the correct one. Once you have figured out who the suspect is, and you've managed to get hold of the weapon out of all of these cards, there's one other thing you need to do. You need to collect guilty points, which are these other types of card here, these guilty cards. And once you have enough, and these represent the evidence you have against the suspect, you can declare an arrest. You can say, it was the suspect's name with the crossbow, revealing the crossbow, because blah 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 from all your guilty cards. Once you've done that, you've won the game. So there is definite correlation there to Cluedo with the whole there's a suspect and that there's a murder weapon. But you no longer have the you need to figure out the murder weapon or you need to figure out the location. In fact there are no locations, which is only a good thing because that means no roll and move. But let's talk about the art and the components. So obviously there's only cards in this and the art is... Okay, it's a bit mediocre. Component-wise, the cards are a nice large size. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, there really isn't a whole lot going on in this game. The whole thing is that you will be picking up a card and playing a card each turn. Some of those cards are actions that might make someone miss their turn, or give you all their suspect cards, or all their weapon cards, etc. And you're choosing who to play those on. So, yeah, there's really not a lot of gameplay to talk about. It is very much luck of the draw. The only choice you're then having is how you use those cards and abilities and when you use them, when you hold them back. But everything you're holding back, there's a risk that you'll then lose at a later point. So there is an uh, interesting kind of debate there. There is an element of decision making that saves this from being a pure luck game. Is it a fun game? Yes, it actually is. It is a nice, fun game. It's not really going to be life-changing, but if, like me, you've played Clue or Cluedo, and you've liked the whole murder mystery thing, but you wanted something that didn't overstay its welcome, that didn't drag on and on, and have this ridiculous roll-and-move mechanic, then this is a really good game for giving you that feel of solving the mystery. But still being heavily luck, anyone can play game that's just easy to pick up and play. It's so simple, you just give someone a hand of cards and then say, on your turn, you may draw a card and you may play a card. Those are the things you can do. And if at the end of your turn you have more than five cards, you have to discard cards. It's a really simple, easy concept. And there's nothing really offensive in any of the artwork, it's just a bit dull and boring. It just feels like it could be more. So, yeah, that's kind of everything. What about two players? Can it play two players? You can play it with two players, I just don't really recommend it with two players. It feels very flat, very boring. It works, but it feels like you need to have the things spread out more, there to be more actions needed to get the stuff. Otherwise, in a two-player game, it can be a bit just... Right, well, we have now know what each other have. We've just got to sort through the deck. And because with only two people, you can find that out pretty quickly. 
So yeah, definitely the higher player numbers is where this game is at its best. Really wouldn't recommend playing it at two players. If you want something that has uh, just a heavy take that element, because you know there is a lot in here that's really going to mess with people, especially skip players' turns is very mean. And you're taking their cards, which is their ability to then do things and have information, which can also be very mean. So, you know, by all means, this is not a game for everyone. If you're happy to have some take that, you want a little quick card game, it's going to play about 30 minutes for realistically, I would say, the four to six player number range, then this may be one for you to check out. Okay, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and um, please do subscribe to the channel as well as checking out the rest of the videos and taking a look at us on social media. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.